So this lesson's going to be covering the mail app service. So I'm going to start by showing you how you can create a file and then send that file as a PDF blob using the send email. We're going to be sending the email using the email parameters. So we've got the recipient, the subject, and the body, and then the options. And then also using the advanced options to send the email content where we can set the name, the to, the CC, the BCC, reply to, subject, HTML body. And this also gives us an opportunity to create and send to multiple emails. So we can comma separate out all of the emails that we want to send to, and this is contained within a string value. There's also a way to get the remaining quota that you have for the day of sending emails. It's going to return back an integer value as a numeric value, which you can also use within your script to make sure that you are still able to send emails and that you haven't reached your daily quota before you try to send out emails. Let's create a new project. And then within here, we're going to add in and creating some new files. So I'm going to call this creator one as the function. And then within the function code, we're going to launch the creation process. So first off, let's create some content. So the content of the file, and I'm actually going to call this HTML. And then within here, this is where we're going to have the content of the file. So this can be any content and it's going to be within a string format. And I just called it HTML. So it doesn't have to be HTML content, or you can create an HTML file if you want as well. So within this structure of the file, we want to create a brand new file on our drive. And we're going to create this as a new blob. So making a new file and also creating a blob out of the file. So using the utilities, construct a new blob. And then the contents or the data of the blob is within the HTML. The type of content is going to be, we'll do the text one first. So it's just a plain text content that we're adding in. And then the name of the file. And this is going to be a text file, the first one that we're going to create. So what we want to do is we want to take this text file that we've just created and send it as an email. So right now it's within a blob format. So it's not actually being saved into the drive. We use the mail app service in order to send an email. And if you are looking just to send a simple email, then you can use the mail app. If you want to interact with your Gmail, then you can use the Gmail app service. So in this case, we do want to just send a simple email, we add in the values within the email. So who we're sending it to. And I'm going to send the email to myself. So let's get the email address and using the session, get the active user. And from the get the active user, we can get the email address. So that will give me the email of the current active user. So basically sending the email to the current account that I'm creating the script with. The next parameter within the send email is going to be the heading and subject. And I'll just write check it out. Then the content of the email and I'll write hello there for the content. And then we separate it out. And this is where we can add in the attachments within the object. So set up a name for the attachment. And I'll call it my file maker as the name. And then let's add the attachments. Within the attachments, it's expecting an array. So we're going to be listing the blob and then get the blob as selecting the blob and then using the meme type for the blob. And we can send it as a PDF in this case. So we're going to be creating a text file within the blob and then converting it into a PDF and sending an email to ourselves. So let's go ahead and we'll run the function, uh, accept the permissions for the app in order to send the email as we're using the mail app service. So there's the permission that is being applied to send the email as you and go into the in email inbox. There's our security alert for the permissions that were granted. And then there's the email that was just sent out. So it created the file. And originally the file was as a text file, but we converted it into a PDF. So there's the subject file maker. So that's where the attachment is coming from. The hello there is going to be the content that we added into the parameters here. And then the name is going to be the name of the sender. So the sender is going to be the my file maker. And you can see that within the email that that's where it originated from. And you can see that within the email. That's the where it came from. And then the attachment, as we had originally a file called new text, 
and that was converted into a PDF format. So when we retrieve it, the new file is now within a PDF format, and then it can be downloaded as a PDF file. Let's create a second function, and I'm gonna call this one creator2. And here we're gonna show you some more that you can do with the mail app service. Just close off the function, and then within here, let's go ahead and we're gonna make the mail app and sending the mail. So use the mail app service, the send mail method. Here, we're just gonna be using the options within the object for the message object. So these are the advanced parameters that are available in here. And we've got an option for name, we've got an attachments, and we don't have to include the email, the subject. We can do that all within the advanced options. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna grab the email address just as we did before from the active user, from the session user, and then setting it within the to value. This is gonna be where the string value for the email is gonna be contained. You can also add in a subject within the advanced parameters. So this is gonna be the subject of the email that gets sent. And within the content of the email, you can add in HTML body. And this is where the HTML content can be sitting from the email. And I'm gonna use the HTML that we had from the earlier example. And we can also set up things like the name that we just saw before. So this can be a string value and include a name of the sender. So let's go ahead and we're gonna run creator2, go into the inbox, and we'll see what we get for the response. So we have the subject, we have the name of the sender, and the HTML content of the email. And this is all within the advanced options. There's even more that you can do. So you can include a CC value into it. And this can also be an email. If you have multiple emails, you can comma separate them. Email, and then I'll concatenate the email that I'm sending it to. And then going back into the email, we'll see that now this value is within the HTML. And this has also been sent to CC to that other user. If you have multiple emails that you're sending it to, we can set up multiple emails and then we just need to comma separate the emails and I'll fix up the quotes there and then update it so that's sending it out to three different users. So you can comma separate those within the fields. I'm gonna just add it into the to field and we'll run the function again. So now it's gonna send out three emails to the users. You can also add that into the CC as well where you can have multiple emails and separate it out by comment. There's also the BCC. So just like the two and the CC, this is expecting a string value. If you have multiple values, you just comma separate the string within the string. So this will BCC to the email address. You can also set it up as a no reply. And this is expecting a Boolean value. So true, the email should be sent from a generic no reply email address to discourage recipients from responding. Uh, so this option is possible for the Google Workspace accounts and not for the Gmail users. So it's only for the Workspace accounts. There's also the reply to, and this is expecting a string value, whatever the default user's email is that you wanna be able to reply to. And that can also be set as you're sending out the emails. These are some of the, these are the advanced options that you have for the parameters when you're using the mail app service. There is a quota within the mail app service and you can get that quota using your Google Apps scripts. So I'm gonna call this checker one and we're gonna be checking the mail app service quota and returns back a value. So this is the number of emails that the user can send for the rest of the day. So let's check how many more emails I can send. So using the mail app service and then get the daily quota and within the logger log. And if you are sending a lot of emails, then you can use this to check to see how many you have remaining. You can also incorporate into the scripts to make sure that before it tries to send out that there is a value there that of the remaining emails before it tries to send it out. So right now I've got 83 emails that are left. We'll run the checker too. And then creator, so we sent out another email. So now I've got 79 emails because I've got the emails that are sending out and there's three users that we're sending the emails to. So that's why the number of emails and the quota changed by three because of the daily quota. And we had sent three emails as we had copied it to three different users. So each one of them was counted as an email. So use the get remaining daily quota if needed to check to see how many emails that you have left in order to send using the mail app service.